Welcome to HR Party of One. I'm your host, Ryan McCoslin. And today we're covering a topic that in the last eight weeks has been discussed ad nauseum among friends. It has gotten some attention from the media, but it's a topic that hasn't gotten a whole lot of structured thought yet from HR professionals. Here's the question. How can we support and understand our colleagues who are balancing work from home responsibilities with parenting responsibilities? And this is a topic that I've given a fair amount of thought to. And that's because it's personal for me. I've mentioned before that I'm working from home with my family. That includes my wife, who's an attorney for a technology company here in Nashville, and also our three young children, who are five, three, and one. My wife and I are just two of the millions of Americans who are finding a way to balance professional responsibilities with parenting responsibilities. And and we all know that parenting is hard. It's almost a cliche to say that out loud. Literal volumes have been written about this topic. And we're now in uncharted territory. So let's talk about how to approach your team to get an idea of what we can do as HR parties want to support them, if only by showing that we understand that what they're doing right now is challenging. Under normal circumstances, when an HR party of one is confronted with a parenting question, they might remind their colleagues who are parents how a dependent care FSA works, telling them they can save money on taxes by using this vehicle when they spend money on childcare. But we're not in normal circumstances, and childcare might not be available, or daycares may be closed, so we're going to have to take a different approach. For small and medium-sized employers, a good way to start this conversation is by reaching out to the parents you have on your team to ask them what their approach is, how they're balancing this. It's a good way to start the conversation, build community, show empathy, and collect tips and tricks that can be disseminated. It's exactly what we did for this episode, and we're going to share some of the approaches that we've gathered from our own team members here at Bernie Portal. One quick disclaimer. Everyone's situation is different, and I don't expect our advice here to be comprehensive or exhaustive. Generally, we're going to be talking about situations where there are two working parents who are also balancing um, childcare responsibilities while they're working from home. If your situation is different or you have advice that, that we haven't covered today, please share them in the comments section under this YouTube video. We'd love to hear them. When we asked our colleagues at Bernie Portal about how they were balancing parenting responsibilities, we learned that there were some themes that emerged. And generally, there were three different approaches. The first is the structured approach. The second is the flexible approach. And the third we're calling the divide and conquer approach. Let's talk more about those. The structured approach essentially splits the workday into morning and afternoon shifts. One parent takes the early shift and the other parent takes the later shift. The advantage of this approach is that each parent knows that they get a window of uninterrupted time where they can squeeze video conferences and calls and projects into that window knowing they're not going to get interrupted by their children. The disadvantage of this approach, though, is that, well, life happens. And you might not have as much control as you'd like over when you schedule your meetings. And, and, and things can go sideways and require follow-up. Um, so it requires a healthy amount of discipline and communication, not just with your spouse, but with colleagues and clients and vendors, so that you can be sure to squeeze as much as you can into the window that you have each day. The flexible approach is the one that well, my wife and I use in our house. It requires more communication and more juggling than the structured approach, but it allows for, well, more flexibility. Each day we powwow and we talk about the next 48 hours. We share the meetings that we have that are essential, that we need to be downstairs in our office so that we can video conference or have uninterrupted conversations. We also talk about impending deadlines or projects that require deep work so we can carve out time. That means that I'm sometimes downstairs for an hour or two. And then when I wrap up, I walk upstairs, I high five my wife, I tag in, take care of the kids, and she comes downstairs so she can knock her own work out. It also means that sometimes we're working outside of the normal work day, more frequently. She often works early in the morning. And right now I'm filming this episode at about 11.30 at night because I know I'll have some uninterrupted time um, where I can devote to this. The third approach is the divide and conquer approach. This is an approach that may make sense for two working parents who have two children at home. One parent takes one kid for the day, and the other parent takes the other. This can make sense if there's one parent whose work is a little bit different and requires deep and consistent focus. A software developer, for example, 
isn't going to get a whole lot of work done if they're constantly being interrupted by a toddler tugging at their leg. So that parent would take the lower maintenance child for that day. And now, here are a few more tips that we gathered from some of our colleagues at Bernie Portal. Matt Claymeyer says, eat together. This may be the only time in your life that you can reasonably have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with your family. Liz Hathaway says, give a lot of grace to yourself and others, especially your kids, and set boundaries. If it's an important call, the door is shut and the kids are not allowed to bother you. And Kraft Hayes says, plan your days in advance. That means taking a few minutes to look at a calendar and mark down any virtual meetings or important calls you have or any looming deadlines. Stick to a regular schedule as much as possible. Having a routine keeps you and the children productive and helps manage disruption. Hopefully this has been helpful. My wife, who I mentioned before, is smarter and better looking and kinder than me and all of those things. And throughout these past eight weeks, she's reminded me that we'll probably look back on this experience with gratitude for all the time that we've got to spend with our young children. But that doesn't mean it isn't hard. If you're an HR Party of One, consider sharing this video with your own colleagues who are parents. We also have a blog post that we'll link to in the description below. You may be able to initiate a conversation so you can learn what their concerns are and maybe some tips and tricks that you can share and disseminate. If you do learn something, please share it in the comments section below. Remember, your job is as strategic as you make it.